Love him or not. It's a good day in baseball when Major League Baseball's best player gets a chance to play in the World Series. His first World Series at bat. The Angels early will come after Barry Bonds when the situation dictates it. And this situation dictates Washburn challenging Barry Bonds as much as he can. That just missed in the count. Two balls, no strikes. On 2-0. Oh. Oh, Defensively, Tim, we see Gloss basically shading up the middle like a shortstop. You see Eckstein over playing a regular second base, and Tim just circled Adam Kennedy, who's playing shallow right. It's like a softball defense for Bond. And that's crushed into right field. First World Series at bat, home run Bond. One to nothing, San Francisco. Baseball royalty circles the bases in the second. You can shift all you want, Tim McCarver, but you can't shift for that. You can't play that high. Good. That ball was absolutely smoked. No doubter into the seats and right. After 17 years, one swing. Giant. That'll bring in Barry Bonds. The base is empty. All fastballs the first time around. Washburn misses high. He misses low. Watch this swing. Just missed it. He doesn't miss this one. And that's not too... Oh, my God! Just similar to the home run that he hit off Finley. A pitch that was not as far up and in. But Bonds with that amazing ability to keep the ball fair as he takes a strike. That one had a wrinkle on the other. How about that playful look on Washburn's face when he saw the ball leave the ballpark? One ball, one strike. Gene Klein, you heard his reaction the first time. I wonder if he's cleared his throat <laughs> for the second at bat. And if Barry Bonds will get a chance to swing at something that's any good from Washburn, it's two and one. The one thing that Barry Bonds has done, he has made big league meetings shorter over the last two years. Because when they get to him, nobody knows how to pitch him, so you just skip over him. Guys just hit the field a little earlier. Well, we've seen the early approach from Washburn. And Mike Sosha said before the game that early in the game we will come after Barry Bonds, and he's done it in his first two at bats. That's one of those twisters off the glove of Benji Molina. Home plate umpire Jerry Crawford giving Molina a break. A lot of times when it's off the mitt like that, the bad part of the mitt, you don't think it hurts. But this ball bending the middle fingers of Molina's hands back, the left hand. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball missed, full count. Washburn's come after him twice. Bonds won once, and now Jared Washburn wins the battle. There is a big difference between a fastball down the middle of the plate and one up and in. Washburn wins this battle. That's the one thing you don't do, Joe. You don't see Barry Bonds swinging many bad pitches. You don't see him check swing. 198 walks this year, 14 in the postseason. Glad you're with us as we move into inning number six. Barry Bonds has homered and struck out. 
The Angels put the shift on. And Bonds hits it right into the shift, right to Spezio, who I think made a barehanded stop after that crazy hop for the first out of the inning. What a good play that was. We talked about uh, Scott earlier being critical of his voice when singing for the Sand Frogs. <laughs> Had this ball gotten through his glove, that's bad for the voice, too. Oh, nice play. Just Reminiscent of that play Aurelia made in game five of the LDS against Atlanta. Similar bad hop. Barry Bonds coming up. 4-3 Giants in the eighth. Barry Bonds has a chilly at best relationship with the media. Doesn't show much emotion on the field. Dusty Baker telling us that don't worry. Barry Bonds is excited to be in this 2002 World Series. He's a strong but, you know, but sensitive man. And, uh, and he wants to win very, very bad whether he says it or not, uh, whether he shows it or not. And uh, sometimes I, I bet his insides are just exploding with, with happiness and and, and fireworks on the outside, you know, it's, he still appears cool and stoic, but he's not. On the inside, I know he's happy. Well, happy after his first at bat back in the second inning, first chance in a World Series game, and he homered into right against Jared Washburn. Here's Schoenweiss, who is involved now in five postseason games, dealing with Bonds. If this is a long World Series, Scott Schoenweiss will see plenty of Barry Bonds. The only left-hander the Angels have in their bullpen, former starter. Bonds is homered, struck out, grounded out. One out of seven in his career against this lefty in the count 2-0. Mike Kruko. My partner on about 20 games doing the Giants this year calls this the wishbone offense. Actually, the wishbone defense. The 2-0. Three balls, no strikes. And I don't, I don't think you need as dramatic a wishbone defense for Bonds against the left-handed pitcher. Reason for that. It's the same thing with J.T. Snow, who homered to left center against the left-hander, Jared Washburn. Left-handed hitters are not inclined to pull left-handed pitchers as much as they do right-handed pitchers. A four-pitch walk, one on, one out, and that's probably it for showing wise. First pitch to Barry Bonds, second inning, five to nothing, Angels. Game two, Bonds, breaking ball, in for a strike. This is the best case scenario if you're Kevin Apier dealing with a five to nothing lead. One of the few times that you know the opposition is going to try to get Bonds out and come after him. There are times to walk Barry Bonds when it makes all the sense in the world. This is not one of them. Leading by five runs in the second. One ball, one strike. That is absolutely the truth. And since it is the truth, does it translate that it would be easier for Bonds to hit a home run in this situation? The answer to that is yes. Last night he went deep in his first at bat, facing Jared Washburn. A 1 1 pitch from Apier. 1 and 2. Slider up and in, ties him up. Apier with the game's best hitter set up. Misses down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Let's look at some of the greats in their World Series debut. The all-time home run leaders. Last night, Bond hit a home run. Those are the top four on the all-time home run list. Now the count's full.
Santiago will follow for the Giants and then Reggie Sanders here in the second. That missed the outside corner and a leadoff walk. An indication of the respect for Barry Bonds, but also the tenacity of Kevin Apier, even with a five run lead. Not pitching around Bonds, but walking him. Normally a no no, but in Bonds' case, you can't say that. But still, that five to nothing lead is the reason that you try to avoid base runners, and Bonds may hit the ball to the Matterhorn. <laughs> Now Barry Bonds who walked to start the trouble last inning takes ball one after this a flat fat slider there is action for the Angels out in their bullpen as Bonds looks at ball two see the spin on the slider. That pitch had hit me hard, written all over it. John Lackey is getting loose. Giants bench reaction as they've made it a two run game. With Lackey getting loose, Molina out to buy some time. I know one of your favorite parts of being a catcher to head out and buy time for a guy <laughs> in the bullpen and look Bob Gibson in the eyes and say, well, you know why I'm here. There's certain pitchers you just go halfway. Stand <laughs> Here's the 2 0 pitch. Pitch number 47 from Kevin Apier. You know what Bonds is thinking about? Thinking about his second home run of this World Series as it goes to 3 0. Instead, he may get his second walk of this game. Tying run will come to the plate. Fans here in Anaheim are growing restless as Santiago walks in. And it's only a matter of time when John Lackey says he's ready to go, he's coming in. They're going to intentionally walk Barry Bonds. Bonds representing the tying run. And the Angels are going to put him on. It's Santiago. Coming up. And this move makes plenty of sense to me. Sure, it does. This will put runners on at first and second, and again, keep the pressure on the back of 37 year old Benito Santiago. It was the NLCS MVP. It's the seventh intentional walk of the postseason. 18th total walk handed out to Bonds in this postseason. Lackey gives up the double, strikes out Kent, walks Bonds. Weber coming in with Santiago coming up. When Rodriguez was born, Barry Bonds was a freshman in college. They'll pitch to Bonds with two out. Right at Spezia and the Giants go in order. Here comes Bonds. Percival will challenge him. This should be some matchup here in the ninth inning. As Bonds now tries to get on to keep it going for Santiago. Not a time to pitch around Bonds. Ball one. Well, it's a time to say to yourself that under no circumstances should you walk Bonds. Ripped into right field. It's a one run game as Bonds gets his second of the series. You could see Salmon saying in the dugout, that's the furthest ball I've ever seen hit. 
And it's an 11-10 Anaheim lead in the night. It's not the farthest ball that we've ever seen Barry Bonds hit, however, because we saw him hit one farther at Yankee Stadium our second Saturday this year, June 8th. But still, under no circumstances can you do anything but that. Here it is, hit it. Think about Bonds is whenever you do that, he does. Awesome. That's why you talked about Aurelia. And you can see Sam and saying that. But that's why you talked about Aurelia taking a strike. Right. Kent going after the first pitch. And off the thumb of the glove. And now he's got to deal with Bonds. What a critical play that was for the Angels to make. And the Angels are going to walk Bonds and load the bases with one out. The crowd all over the Angels for this decision. And this will present bases loaded one out for Benito Santiago. This will be the eighth intentional walk of this postseason and the 19th walk overall to Barry Bonds. We are not privy to this information, but I would bet that in World Series history, this is the first time any hitter has ever been walked in the first inning, first and third and one out. Well, this loads the bases and it presents Benito Santiago with yet another chance to do damage. Walked intentionally, that is. 76 times this year, including postseason. As Bonds will bat with one on, one out. Back to game two, ninth inning. Two out, nobody on. Troy Percival. 97 mile an hour fastball. And about midway up that right field section of seats. The other day, we talked to Mike Socia about putting that shift on, which every team does, and then not holding the runner on at first base. Mike said, I get your drift, and that's what the Angels are doing right now. Why hold the runner on when you've got a shift? So Spezio behind, Aurelia at first. Right down the middle, the 93-mile-an-hour fastball from Ortiz. Bonds does not get to see many of those. He gets more of those in the count's 0 and 2. That one had some nasty downward action to it. A two seam fastball to get ahead of Bonds 0 and 2. Bonds intentionally walked back in the first. One on, one out. And an 0-2. Three pitches and a strikeout for Ortiz. Third strikeout for the 29-year-old right-hander. This has not happened many times this year. He only struck out 47 times. Fastball taken, a diving fastball, and another one to get Barry Bond. Impressive by Ortiz. Only five strikeouts in the 55 postseason plate appearances for Bonds. And now with one on two out, here's Santiago. Barry's last at bat. What happened? Well, he took a fastball, and then he swung at a low fastball, and then he swung at a low fastball. Three pitches, a strikeout to Bond. If Bonds belts one out of here, Giants are right back in this thing. Bonds could make it a four run game. One on, one out. The crowd's back, and that's ball one outside. 
Pitching Bonds away is no surety of getting him out. He has as much power to left as right. And for a strike at the knees, Bonds doesn't agree, and it's one and one. Close. One on, one out. Bonds in the center field. Back at the wall. It's a four-run game. Another blast from Barry Bonds. talk about was that Barry Bonds did not know how to play or hit in the month of October. Came in with a career average in the postseason of 196 with one home run. With this, he becomes the first player to hit home runs in each of his first three World Series games. That was Phenomenal how far that ball traveled to dead center field All right, in that package you talked about earlier You talked about the ball that bonds hit to the base of the center field backdrop and that ball almost dropped in that area Awesome. Last time up Barry Bond. Fastball low. Fastball low. Fastball single. I never heard a measurement. You measure it. What do you think? Long way. Four. Four. Fifty. Fifty-eight. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't had a measurement. We will. Don't worry. Bonds with the bases cleared in front of him. Makes a ball. Intentionally walked in the first inning to load the bases. Struck out on three pitches in the third. And then hit a 437 foot home run into center. That's the official mark given to that blast in the fifth. 2-0. Two. Two Another spot up by five runs. Two balls, no strikes. Just like Troy Percival the other night. Missing with ball three, three and oh. With two out, a four pitch walk. That draws the ire of the crowd here at Pac Bell Park. And action will start for the Angels down in their bullpen. Everybody booing here at Pac Bell because they're used to seeing people walk Barry Bonds 198 times during the season. But then Donnelly wanted to make a good pitch on him. There was no intent on Brendan Donnelly's part. The pitch around him. Again, because of the lack of production from Jeff Kent, not only making it out, but leaving the runners at first and third. Here's another chance for the Anaheim Angels to walk Barry Bonds and put it up to Benito Santiago. Three home runs so far for Barry Bonds. Game one, first at bat. Jared Washburn, forget about it. Game two, off Percival. Halfway up the seats in right. And then last night, 
Walking, walking, walking down the first baseline, watching that sail into center. And now walking, walking, walking down to first after yet another walk. Third intentional walk, seventh overall handed to Bonds in this World Series. Intentional pass to Bonds. This is the easiest decision that Sosha has had to make. Last time in this situation and last night, the walk was given to Bonds to force runners up. Here, first base is open. And the easy decision to load them up and heap it all again on the back of Benito Santiago, who's only two out of 14 in this World Series. With Halloween only a week away, two nightmarish at bats by Jeff Kent. Here or not. Because now the automatic walk to Bonds. It's a sack fly to right by Kent, then E9 on the throw home, which Aurelia took second. It does open up first base, and it gives the Angels the easy option of walking Bonds to put runners at first and second with one out for Santiago. So three plate appearances, three intentional walks to Bonds. Win a World Series game when he got the victory in game two. One out as Kent strikes out, becomes the 20th strikeout victim this postseason for Francisco Rodriguez. You can tell somebody that pitch is coming, and they're not going to hit it. Devastating slider. shift is on and Rodriguez who pitched to Bonds in game two and got a sharply hit ground ball to first will come after Bonds here with one out nobody on in the seventh in a tie game strike one strike bonds has been intentionally walked three times in this game five times in this World Series which is a record Just missed, and it's two and one. Bonds with seven home runs this postseason, 14 RBIs. Third slider in a row. And it's two and two. That's the one thing you rarely see from Barry Bonds a check swing. Another indication of how tough that tightly wrapped slider is from Rodriguez. against the 38 year old the rookie against the 17 year major league veteran number four on the all time home run list to first again to Spezio two out in the seventh five sliders in a row now they're all called sliders but they're different pitches in one pitch that ball goes down. That ball goes way down. <laughs> that ball backs up. That ball really went down. And that one hangs. You can call it one pitch, a slider, but it does many, many different things. The answer to the question challenge him, and in this spot, with one out in the inning and the runners at first and second I think they will at least pitch carefully but come after Barry Bonds here in the first well a couple of things why wasn't Kenny Lofton running on that three two count 
probably if Kent struck out, they wanted Lofton at first base. But if you could walk Bonds first and third with one out, as the Angels did twice last night, why can't you walk him first and second with one out? A little high, but a called strike, and Bonds reacts. First at bat, game one oh, against Jared oh Washburn. God. And an oh my home run from Barry Bonds to right. Runners at first and second, one out, no balls, one strike on Bonds. I think the difference is the lead runner was already at third. Right, so you could score a cheap run. As opposed to here, you're forcing the runner over to third, and giving Santiago the easier RBI chance. One ball, one strike. The Angel infield defense is different tonight. With nobody on, or a runner on at first base only, Troy Gloss would be at the shortstop position. The three infielders on the right side. So instead of instead of having the left field area open, the shortstop area is open for Bond. Two balls and a strike. The reason Gloss has to and his position is just in case Kenny Lofton runs. But he's not likely to run right here with Bonta. Washburn gave up that game one home run to Bonds. It was a solo shot. Washburn gave a shrug after that. A little smile. Different situation here. As Bonds Looks one into right, and the Giants take the lead. Lofton will score. Kent will be held at third. RBI double one to nothing Giants. Jared Washburn changes speeds on his fastball. By gripping the ball just a little bit tighter. He throws from 85 to 93. This was closer to 85 than 93. And that's why Bond's able to pull it in the corner and Lofton scores easily, with Kent going to third in the same fashion. Four hops and off the wall and right. And Barry Bonds gets an early chance the season for Barry Bonds. And no arguing this decision with the 12th intentional pass being made to Bonds. It's already three to nothing San Francisco. And these seats are filled with fans who have brought chickens with them to the ballpark. There's ball four to load him up for Santiago. Washburn as Kent gets under one and flies into Salmon and right. One away. We talked about what happened back on June 25th in San Diego between Jeff Kent and Barry Bond. And for fans watching the World Series and aren't familiar with the history between these two, the 2000 NL MVP and the 2001 NL MVP came together at the end of the second inning. Kent had come into the dugout and was critical of David Bell on a throw that he made in a double play situation. Bond sticking up for David Bell, and the two came face to face. They had had comments made to the press about one another, and to be honest with you, Kent is more public and open about not getting along with Bonds and vice versa. Kent has done long articles and made comments not shying away from the fact that the two who anchor the three four spots in this lineup don't really speak the 2 0 pitch bonds two balls and a strike in fact Barry Bonds has said on the record that he believes and really hopes that the Giants will sign Jeff Kent that's right to a contract extension he's a free agent at the end of the year the 2 1 pitch Check swing and a little pop up into left field for Karen Anderson. And 
Stephen Bond retired for the first time tonight. That was Stan Conti, the trainer, by the way, who was between Kent and Bond. I think uh, people had a tendency to think that there was more to that because it was so public. But there are an awful lot of, and they genuinely do not like one another, but there are an awful lot of things that go on between teammates over the course of the season that are never made public. Things in the clubhouse, things on team buses, on charters. Flat breaking ball from Weber. Now an 0-1 to Bonds with two out. Into left center field. That ball's going to plug the gap and scoop to the wall. Bonds has his second double of the night. left center. Why is Mike Socia going to walk Benito Santiago? Because Felix Rodriguez, the pitcher, is scheduled to hit in the six hole. Now with two out, Bonds takes a ball. The last time a two-run home run on a breaking ball, and this time a two-run home run on a fastball. Bonds. Shields coming right after him. A ball and a strike. The Giants' top four hitters are now nine out of 17. Shields took something off. Strike two. About the only thing missing tonight for the Giants is a Bonds home run. Number four on the all time list. Two balls, two strikes. Bonds with a pair of doubles tonight. He scored twice, driven in one run. Up the middle, under the glove of Exton. That's the shortstop on the other side of the bag, and Bonds has been on base four times with three hits and a walk. Up until about four years ago, the conventional wood used in bats of the major league level was ash. Barry Bonds uses a bat made of maple. It's a denser wood. Has he ever put some dents in it over the last two years? None is more dangerous than Barry Bonds. You got what you wanted in game five. Mike Social pitched to him. No home runs, but it was still painful. Knows to get the ring, he has to get by one of the greatest players of all time. Barry Bonds is an extraordinary talent, and I think that that the fact that we've talked about things, uh, the fact that we've done things that maybe weren't considered, uh, you know, uh, in, in the, the baseball by the book, uh, shows how talented Barry is. It is amazing. We do marvel at, at uh, what other teams, you know, how afraid they are uh, of Barry. A lot of it's his fault. You know, because like they pitched him tough before, but this really started when he hit 73 home runs. When he hit 73 home runs, then they just started doing stuff that I've never even seen before. You know, walking to get the base loaded. One day, uh, he even walked in a run, you know, versus not to pitch to him. And I think that was one of the first ones I've seen. Nobody 
in this era has done what Barry Bonds has done in the postseason, the batting average, particularly the slugging, almost 1,000. On-base percentage close to 600. Seven home runs tied with Troy Gloss in the postseason. The walks really impressed me. I mean, that you changed the dynamics of the ball game by the way you manage against Barry Bonds. You put him on early in the ball game. You create more at-bats for him later in the ball game. I think Mike Socher might have to change the game plan just a little bit. Maybe go after him, even with men on base. See if you can get him out. See if he'll roll over a ball once in a while. He still is a 370 hitter. You still got almost a 63 percent chance of getting him out. But you keep walking him two or three times a ball game. What happens? You turn the lineup over, and all of a sudden those good hitters are coming up in the eighth and ninth inning with the game on the line, and that's what you don't want. And now it's Bonds, and it's going to be a two-out man at first, intentional walk. The fans in San Francisco, I'm sure, are going crazy. And those that are here from San Francisco waving rubber chickens around as they did back at Pac Bell Park. This will put two on with two out for Santiago. If you're a Giants fan, you got to like what's happening. Walking Bonds here, you're walking Jeff Kent into scoring position. Ball four to put two on with two out. I mean, to me, this is one of those careful pitch around situations as opposed to an intentional walk. Mike Socia with runners on at first and third. In the first and third with one out of game four, walked in intentionally. Now with two outs, walking a runner into scoring position, I don't agree with that. The Angels go in order. We go to the fourth. It'll be Bond, Santiago, and Snow. Giants trying to get a lead. Middle innings, game six. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you here in the booth, and uh, I am with you on this one. I think we are going to see pitches for Barry Bonds to try and hit out of this ballpark. I think uh, we're going to see pitches on one side of the plate or the other. I'd be very surprised if Apier throws anything down the middle of the plate to Bond. Bonds leading it off. Santiago and Snow will follow. Away we go. Ball one low. Again, an intentional pass to Bonds with a runner at first, two out in the first, and Apier then ran the count to 2 0 on Santiago, who's next here. Came back and got him on a foul out to the first baseman. Bonds ready for a 1 0 pitch. That's on the inside corner, a ball and a strike. Threading the needle, and he gets the strike. The slider just hitting. He's been walked 25 times in the postseason, 13 intentional walks. That's over, but low, two balls and a strike. Ball three, three and one. So you look at the other side, a leadoff walk could start trouble for the San Francisco Giants. Sure. It did back in game two when Apier had a five to nothing lead and walked Bonds leading off the second. Bonds was moving around ready to take the pitch, and the ball came in at his shoe tops and almost clipped him. A leadoff walk. Here's Kevin Apier talking about pitching to Bonds in this World Series. He deserves that much respect, and, and uh, he's, you know, the talk about him is not, uh, how would you say, out of place by overestimating him at all. He's, he's that dangerous, that potent. Uh, you know, he struck out only 40 something times this year, and when he does make contact with the ball, it's usually hard. So. Um, you know, that's a big part of their game, and, and uh, how we approach that is quite significant. 47 strikeouts, 46 home runs. Disco Rodriguez back to the hill. He hits the outside corner, strike one to Bonds. Bonds has walked twice tonight, 26 times in the postseason. 
six for 12, and he's been able to swing the bat. That is crushed. Oh, deep into the night, and it's four to nothing. San Francisco. Eighth home run of this postseason. For the man who's number four on the all time list with 613 career home runs. Four nothing Giants. My gosh. That's one of the toughest sliders to hit. Ball about neck high, middle of the plate. And just absolutely crushed. That thing will take your breath away. Oh. It's taken the air out of this stadium. Eight home runs this postseason. Another exit. Liz Bonds. That's 14 home runs now in this World Series for the Giants. And that's a World Series record. As Santiago waits for an 0-2 pitch. Takes strike three right down the middle, one out. Gene Klein's the hitting coach for the Giants. As he watches this ball sail out. Dunstan has gone deep. Bonds has gone deep. A 1 0 pitch to Bonds. One ball, one strike. That was about the same pitch that he hit out his last at bat. Mary's going to try to find every exit and fair play in this ballpark before he leaves. Two balls and a strike. Bonds has hit two big home runs into the bleachers out in right center field, and both have been at exit areas deep into the night. That's a strike, and it's two and two. Good fastball from Rodriguez. Bonds agrees. Bonds strikes out, and it's time to stretch in Anaheim. But the Giants come up with another big run. Another two out run, something they've featured this entire postseason. It's five to nothing San Francisco as we move to the bottom of the seventh. Barry Bonds leads off the second for the Giants, and Lackey deals ball one down and in. Bonds up to start the inning. And the Angels at least giving the appearance that they will pitch to Bonds with no score. And they do in a line drive. To the shortstop, Eckstein, playing where a second baseman normally would. One out. Can't hit it any harder than this. A low tracer, and Eckstein is where the second baseman normally would be. Adam Kennedy, the second baseman in short right. So Bonds is retired, now 7 out of 15 in this World Series. The Angels pitched to Bonds in the second. He lined out to the shortstop on the second base side of the bag. And they'll pitch to him here in the fourth inning, leading by three. Ball one. Sprint 
virtual manager question. The times the Angels walked Bonds. They didn't walk him in the second. They don't intend to walk him. Here in the fourth inning, up by three. The count's gone to two and zero. Oh. Bonds may be ready to tee off on home run number five in this World Series and nine in this postseason. I doubt that Barry will get a breaking ball. Well, I beg your pardon. I doubt that he'll get a fastball since it's a fastball count. If it is a fastball, it'll shave a corner. <laughs> right down the pipe. Right down the middle. Lackey said, here, hit it. Bonds took it. Two and one. Uh, <laughs> crack analysis. Huh? To the left side. Diving stop by Gloss. Can't make the play at first. That was the third baseman, the former shortstop at UCLA, making a diving stop to his right to keep the ball on the infield, but it's a one out infield single. Look where Gloss is playing. The Angels come as close to having four infielders on the right side as you'll find. But he had too far to go. Bonds with a pulled hamstring for about two months of the season is running well now. No way to get Barry. An infield hit for Bonds. Sounds strange, does it not? Get with it, one out. The bases are empty in front of Barry Bonds. So after giving the Giants and their fans a glimmer of hope for this performance in Game Five, Jeff Kent with a walk and double, two two-run home runs. Kent is hitless in this Game Seven, and Bonds. Led off the second, batted with the bases empty in the fourth, and again bats with the bases empty here in the sixth. One out of two tonight. Ready to hit on the first pitch now. Strike one. Bonds has clubbed eight home runs this postseason. He came into this postseason with only one in his career. 485 foot home runs in games two and six. One ball, one strike. Begs the question has he reached his peak yet? Here he is, 38 years old. And to even think of that question is astonishing. A 1 1. Popped up. To shoot for Eckstein. Two out. Barry Bonds is a four time MVP in the National League. Some have won more. Wayne Gretzky with nine in the NHL. Gordie Howe, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Bill Russell had five in the NBA. Bonds is not only the first four time MVP award winner. But there's very little doubt that he will win his fifth after what he did this year. Walking 198 times and hitting a league high 370. Has given up two hits and 21 at bats with 11 strikeouts. Bonds for the bases empty. Barry Bonds hit a 485 foot home run off Rodriguez last night. It came in the sixth. It made it four to nothing. Giants. It's two and oh. Last night an 86 mile an hour changeup from Rodriguez. As Bonds found an exit. Three and zero. And while he may walk him, he's not trying to pitch around Bonds no with way. a three-run lead, two out in the eighth. Three and one. Barry started to leave. He's used to it. <laughs> used to taking right turns. And left turns at first. 
should challenge him on three and one. And he misses low for a two out walk. That for Bonds is his 27th walk of this postseason. And now Santiago trying to extend the inning for JT Snow, who's on deck. If that was Bond's last at bat of this World Series, he will end at 8 out of 17 with 13 walks. <laughs> 